We all are waiting patiently, or as patiently as possible, for Tears of the Kingdom to arrive. So I thought while we wait, because there is just a lot of information we're hoping to get about the game before launch, maybe a Zelda Direct, if not at least a launch trailer, but likely some interviews and some other information we'll get in April. I thought it would be fun if we took a look at a rumor. This rumor does come from the Gaming and Rumors Leaks subreddit. So there is that, I guess. Its source is itself. It's probably, you know, this is tinfoil hat time. You put the tinfoil hat on, but the rumor itself actually presents some really exciting stuff. And I'll warn, on the off chance this rumor is right, this is going to enter spoiler territory because it has story details in it. That being said, it's pretty interesting and I think worth making a video on. Now, if you guys are interested in what we're doing here at Nintendo Prime, I would appreciate if you drop a subscription. We are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. If we get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we're going to give away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. And I'm actually going to PAX East this week, and there's an exclusive Tears of the Kingdom pin there. And if I get a couple of those, I might go ahead and give one of those away as well when we hit 100,000 subscribers. That being said, let's get right into this post. And it's by this person named Illy BB. ITF again. Now the moderators have said in this thread that they've actually attempted to reach out to the user who posted this to even get an idea of where they're sourcing this information from. This is what the moderators do. They attempt to try to get people who claim that they are their own source that uh, that this information will be uh, verified in some sort of way to give it some sort of credence. The user hasn't responded. Take that for what you will. People seem to really enjoy this, which is why. I'm covering it. The comment section seems it seems to indicate that it's a pretty fun read. So we get right away into potential spoilers with the plot. So let's just start off the most where it says, as we approach the release date and with marketing assume begin ramping up quite rapidly, you will all be getting answers you seek soon enough anyways. So I would like to share a fair amount of information with all of you regarding the highly anticipated upcoming game, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I wrote things as detailed as I could, and I kept some certain plot points and revelations out of the text because there's got to be some surprise. So regarding the plot, the Sky Islands are what remains of the Sacred Realm, although they have another name in the game that is explained partway in. The in-game explanation as to why they weren't visible during the events of Breath of the Wild is that when Ganondorf was reawakened by Link and Zelda, the eruption of malice he let out was powerful enough to break the barrier between Hyrule and the Sacred Realm, causing them to merge, so to speak. This is also where the three dragons would travel with their portals in the first game, and there is a plot involving that as well as the presence of additional dragons representing other aspects of the Zelda mythos. The story largely revolves around reforging the Master Sword. When Link and Zelda find Ganondorf, the sword and Link's arm, as seen in the various trailers, are both damaged as a, as a result of Ganondorf's direct attack on the sword itself, as he is obviously aware that it is the one thing and the one person that can legitimately destroy him. The Tears of the Kingdom are both an actual item you must collect as well as a metaphor for the sadness that reigns throughout Hyrule after Ganondorf unleashes his power and army. Zelda is lost underground, and as many have presumed her dead, the kingdom itself weeps for its losses. There are more parallels here that are expounded upon throughout the game. I'm sure you'll be pleased to know that the Zonai do indeed play a large part of the story, but not in ways you might have predicted. I will not say more on the matter due to its extremely intriguing nature. You'll be happier finding this out for yourselves with time. I assure you, some theorists have come very close to predicting what will happen. So let's leave it at that. The world is indeed expanded upon more than just the skies. As mentioned above, Zelda is lost underground, and after a certain part of the main quest, you will be able to begin exploring underground in search of her. You can, at the start of the game, explore some shallower caves and caverns, but the real fun comes later after acquiring a certain item that allows you to go deeper. The underground has its own name that is explained later as well and can only be compared to the underground areas in Elden Ring in terms of scale. They're incredible, and you will be blown away by what has been accomplished with this part of the world. Regarding gameplay, in spirit with how Breath of the Wild was able to be completed in various ways, 
Doing things in different orders or not at all, the same cannot be done with many things in this game. More traditional dungeons do indeed make a return, and there are substantial amounts of them, with smaller shrine-like ones supplementing them as well. The dungeons and shrines are able to be completed in any order, with only dungeons being mandatory to complete the game. You will find sections in each dungeon that cannot be explored without the use of something that is obtained in another one. Read Dungeon Items. You'll be able to backtrack to previous dungeons in order to explore them further for extra items, materials, combat challenges, and so forth. Because you can do them in any order, you may already have the correct item by the time you arrive to another one. Weapon durability is largely the same, with some adjusted values for returning weapons. But you can now craft, repair, modify, and customize weapons to your liking. It's a very extensive system. The horns and such that you have seen on various enemies, plus more materials that have not yet been shown, are used to craft, repair, and change weapons at certain shops found across the map. You will also be using dyes, gems, and other materials to customize the look of weapons as you see fit. Because they are able to be repaired now, it's logical that you may find a sword you grow fond of, and perhaps you want to change the color of its hilt, blade, or sheath, or add a different material to its hilt or sheath to change its look altogether. Note that when I say weapons, I'm also including bows and shields, as well as new types that have been introduced, such as the cannon-like one showed in the last trailer. Every piece of armor and clothing from the first game returns, including the DLC ones, and there are a plethora of new ones as well. They are now divided into four parts rather than three, head, top, bottom, as before, with the inclusion of a separate category for footwear. Every piece of armor in the game can be dyed now, and certain pieces will have alternate looks you can change in the menu, such as putting your hood up or down, or wearing or removing a cape. As shown a small bit with some of the Nintendo Twitter accounts, the paraglider is also customizable, both through the use of Amiibo and without them. A gear storage has been implemented in various locations, including Link's house in Hateno. You can store clothing, weapons, and or even food and materials for later use. When weapons become broken, they remain in your inventory in a broken state and cannot be used until you repair them. Storing them allows you to free up your inventory until you have the means to repair said weapons, or you can simply save your favorites for later use. The crafting system is incredibly extensive and covers both weapons and vehicles as seen in the previous trailer and everything in between, as you can even add weapons such as cannons to the vehicles you create. There are a large quantity of parts and pieces found across the game that are used in combination with a sort of glue, also shown in the trailer, and has exposition in the story a bit as well, to create these vehicles, and the physics system really shines here. If you can think of it and are able to gather the parts, you can build it. You can now hitch wagons to your horses in order to travel around and pick up large vehicle pieces like wheels, body pieces such as crates and slabs, and the like. Similar to how you could drop wood and light it on fire to create a campfire to sit and skip time, you can now set up an actual tent in the wild and sleep for the night. By setting up this camp, you gain access to a cooking pot and some other mechanics as well. You can still set up basic campfires too, as you need additional materials to craft camping kits. Because this makes cooking more easily available than just finding a cooking pot somewhere, eating food has been changed to not be allowed while in active combat and certain other situations all in all we have less than two months until this absolutely incredible game releases regardless of if you believe these details are real or not you'll see soon enough both when the next trailer releases which i promise will be more extensive than several of the previous ones but also because we're so close to release thank you and may hylia be with you now i will say in general i like a lot of these ideas that last one i'm not too keen on you know, because cooking's more easily available uh, than just finding cooking pots randomly, that eating food has been changed to not be allowed in active combat. Considering that we don't have, like, potions, right? We, we don't have the traditional uh, potion thing or uh, breaking items to gain hearts. I find it hard to believe that Nintendo would take the only way that we recover our health, which is consuming elixirs, and eating uh, food and say, hey, when you're in active combat, you can no longer do that. Nintendo's never done that. We've always had a way to recover hearts in active combat. So I just, I, that part I kind of find, like out of all of the possible red flags, that to me is the one. Nintendo's never not given us a way to recover hearts in combat. I, I don't see them changing that now. That doesn't make any sense to me just because we can cook more freely and more often. I don't know how that 
changes a whole lot. Some of us never worried about that anyways because we would stop when we did find a pot and we would cook like crazy and we would have so many dishes on us that it, it was kind of irrelevant. Like I wouldn't cook more just because I could set up a tent, if that made sense. So, and, and with the quick travel in Breath of the Wild, you could literally travel from a shrine out to a town, cook and come back w within, you know, a, a minute. So I honestly don't think that 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 is something Nintendo has implemented. The rest of this stuff, look, there's been a lot of rumors and speculation based on the art book and other things, and some of this lines up with that. Uh, I don't think this is a real rumor. Like, I guess it's a real rumor. I don't think that the information is correct. I think this person's living a wet dream, a fantasy world, and just making up their own stuff. And the fact that they said Nintendo would take away our ability to heal during combat feels really, really dumb. Uh, maybe in a master mode situation, but I, I don't understand why they would make that standard. Uh, there's plenty of people dying all the time in Breath of the Wild, even to this day. So taking away our ability to to heal while we're fighting doesn't doesn't make any sense to me. But that being said, maybe Nintendo did do it. Maybe they thought it was an interesting idea. Maybe all of this is true, and maybe his uncle really does work at Nintendo. Who the hell knows? It was a fun rumor, though, and I hope you really enjoyed it. Again, keep the tinfoil hats on for this one, but uh, you let me know what your favorite part of this rumor was down below. Uh, and you know what? Are you on Team Fake or Team Real? I'm on Team Fake, but uh, it, it it's a fun one, at least. Catch you guys in the next video.